For question nine, we have the Ka for formic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative four. What is a pH for 0.35 um, moles of an aqueous solution of sodium formate? So for this, this is gonna involve quite a bit of steps. The first thing we want to do actually is write out um, this is actually going to be very tricky because we want to actually get all the information without messing up here. Um, we first need to, I guess, write a shorthand of what the question is asking. So we have HCHO2KA is 1.8. So I'm going to let this load, but I'm going to be writing it down as it loads. Okay, so I do apologize for the abruptness. We have 1.8 times 10 to negative 4. It's going to load on your screen soon. And then we want to know the pH for actually is conjugate base, which is NaCHO2. So we can actually just write it as CHO2 minus. This is what's going to happen when it dissociates in water. It's going to separate between sodium and that CHO2. Um, and we want to know of 0.35 moles of this. So the actual form we'll be working with here is going to be CHO2. Let me switch colors for this part. CHO2 minus plus H2O. So that's aqueous liquid turns into HCO2 minus, sorry, <laughs> bad habit, HCHO2 aqueous plus OH minus. Now here's the tricky part though. We were given the Ka, but this OH would actually be using the Kb. You're probably wondering how do we get from Ka to Kb? The same way actually how we get from pKa, I'm sorry, from pH to pOH. Because the um, acid and the conjugate base are like related like that, whatever Ka value is going to be, that multiplied by the Kb will give you 1 times 10 to a negative 14. Or in more simple terms, if you turn the pH to pKa, the formula you get is that pH, sorry, if you turn the Ka to pKa, the formula you get is pKa plus pKb has to equal 14. How do you get this to now pKa? We would actually do same way we get the pH it would be negative log of Ka. Let's put that in the calculator. Negative log of Ka, which is 1.8, negative 4. The pKa for this is around 3.74 pKa. So if pKa plus pKb is 14, then 14 minus the pK is pKb. So 14 minus that answer we just got. Let me just quick clear. 14 minus that answer, we get 10.25. So pKb is equal to 10.25. But we don't want to work with pKb. Well, 10.26, technically, if you round it. We want to work with the Kb. So then here, we'd actually use a formula of as it loads, I'm just going to be writing down these equations. Um, I'm going to pause so that we can actually get the equation. In this case, we're going to have, let me just check over this, pKb to get to pKb back to Kb, it would be 10 to a negative pKb. Hope you can see it pop up to my screen. Okay, perfect. So that is 10 to the power of negative pKb, so negative that answer, and we get the P, the Kb, okay, which is what we want to work with officially, because that tells us the, um, I guess, the, not the rate of the reaction, but more so the amount it would be ionized. That's what we're looking for, the amount of ionization. Kb, it's 5.55, well, 5.56, times 10 to a negative 11. So now we have our Kb we can actually use with the formula above. 
Now that we've done that, we need to set up an ice table. Okay, initial change equilibrium. So with that being said, we started with 0 0.35 moles. Now that's quite a big amount compared to the KB, which will play into effect later on as you'll see. Initial is 0 0.35, and we're assuming we start with zero for the other parts. We don't include water because water is part of the solution. It's not the uh, solute, it's a solvent. We don't include water in there. But we do have one for the HCHO2 and the OH minus, okay? So with that being said, now we have 0 0.35 minus X is a change because in this case, for every piece it loses, as you can see based on this formula, it's a one to one to one ratio. For every one loss here, one of each is gained. So that'd be X and X here, well, plus X. And then in the total equilibrium is gonna have X's, and here, this is where it now plays into effect. Because the 0.35 was such a big number compared to the KB value, we have a rule. If it's more than a thousand times greater the concentration, if the concentration is more than a thousand times greater than the K A or KB, we don't factor that in. It's negligible. So we really just have almost 0.35 again as the equilibrium. The reason that plays to effect because the KB formula is similar to KA is going to be um, OH times the uh, conjugate acid divided by the conjugate base. Okay, so now with that being said, we fill in, it's just going to be x squared because the OH and the conjugate acid, which is two x's, and then the, oh, give me a quick second. In this case, I'm going to fill it out as we go, although it's going to be a little bit more choppy. The KB in this, sorry, the denominator in this case it's just going to be our conjugate base, which we have, which is a 0.35. So we have 0 0.35. Hopefully it'll be stabilizing. So that means KB is equal to that. So KB divided or well, multiplied by 0.35 will be X squared. The square root of that would actually give us X, which is what we're looking for. So we have now times 0.35 for that KB, square root of that. And then we get this really small number, which makes sense. Okay, x is equal to 0 0.00, well actually I'm just do this as easier, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we get 4.41 times 10 to a negative 6. That is how much OH is produced, okay? That is a theoretical P, well not POH just yet, but that's how much hydroxide is produced. And that would actually give us our POH. Once we do the negative log of that, we would get the POH. So in this case, the POH would equal negative log of the answer. We get 5.36 around there, okay? But we're not asking for the POH. We want the pH. So with this, we still apply our same rule again. 14 minus the POH would equal the pH. So in this case, 14 minus that answer, we finally get a pH as our final answer of 8.64. Now, as you can see with this question, a lot of steps were involved. Um, the reason why I'm going over it is because it's important that we need to work with the material given. We were given the Ka for the formic acid, but we're given the molarity of its conjugate base. So we need to work with the Kb. We don't know how much conjugate acid we have without using the KB value to actually see how much it dissociates. So with that being said, that's how we did that. And then once we were able to now find our ice table, we were then able to now more properly, sorry, give me a second. Don't know why this one disappeared. There we go. We were then able to now properly um, get the uh, concentration of the OH minus, find the POH, but then remember the question was asked for the pH, which is why we then convert it back. Okay, so as we can see here, they got the same KB as us. I'm gonna scroll a little bit slower as it stabilizes. Um, 
we have KB of 5.56 times 10 to the negative 11. And then it went on to solve it, which is perfect. That's exactly what we did. And overall, they make sure that it says KB, not KA. So that's just make sure you check over your work. But overall, their concentration of OH minus should be 4.4 times 10 to the negative 6. And then they calculate the POH, which is 5.36. So then the pH will be 8.64. So with that being said, this is correct. And you can see here how they also broke it down step by step as I did to get that answer. So now as the last part, we want to do question number 10.